there is a legitimate way to 4x the amount of protein synthesis that you get after a workout. And you barely have to change a thing. And for some reason, there's just not that many people talking about it, even though the clear evidence is right in front of us. I'll come right out and say this. The Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition had published a paper that showed that after a workout, if you had a protein shake, of course you would get an anabolic response, meaning you would get into muscle protein synthesis. But then they found that if you just add leucine to that protein shake, it 4 x the amount of protein synthesis. Why is this not talked about more? Well, I have some reasons as to why, but Anyhow, we'll break it down. Hey, after this video, I want you to check out my friends over at Blue Blocks. There's a link down below to check them out. Look, I talk about circadian rhythms all the time on my channel. I talk about proper sleep. I talk about how you can allow the environmental cues to actually curate your sleep properly. And one of the best ways to do that is to block blue light at the right times. So Blue Blocks down below, they are blue light blocking glasses, but they also have some specific colored glasses that block different percentages of blue light in different wavelengths for different types of things that you might be focused on. So maybe you're blocking blue light from your computer, or maybe you're trying to block 100% of the blue light at night. Trust me when I say it does actually make an effect, and there is countless research that demonstrates it. People just, once again, aren't opened up to it yet. So I put a special link down below if you want to check out Blue Blocks down below in the description. And thank you, Blue Blocks, for the continued support on this channel so I can keep making content. So here's what happens when you're working out. Okay, you break down some muscle. Now, we are thinking this, we're thinking old school, oh, I'm breaking down my muscle fibers and then rebuilding them. Look at, that's one theory, but that's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about at a cellular level, you're actually breaking down some of your proteins that are weaker and they get deaminated, broken down into amino acids that float through your bloodstream. Okay, so basically I've talked about this before in regards to like intermittent fasting. It's like you have a brick house and then all of a sudden the big storm of a workout comes in, you start destroying it, the house breaks down a little bit. Some components of the house are completely unusable. They get broken down, but some components of the house could actually be recycled quite well to build other houses like these pieces of brick, right? The problem is, is that after a workout, when we have our protein shake, we're really not able to get enough workers there to actually take those amino acids that are now floating around and actually do something with them. So we take some of them and we use them and some of them just get wasted, flat out wasted. Some of them get converted into energy. But the point is, is what if we could find a way to improve protein synthesis so that that protein that we're breaking down with a workout can actually get utilized somewhere? Well, it can with EAAs, with essential amino acids. I am not suggesting that you sip on essential amino acids throughout the day. That is not what you wanna do because you do get a small insulin spike with them. So that would be terribly detrimental to your fat loss regimen. But what we do want is controlled spikes of protein synthesis. Now, what do you think of when you think post-workout meal? You probably think, okay, I'm gonna have some carbohydrates so that I can spike my insulin and I'm gonna have some protein so that I can rebuild. And the old school thought behind that was you spike your insulin and that makes it so that the protein can get into the cell and do its job. So you basically induce protein synthesis, right? There is merit to that. That absolutely does work. But are there better ways that don't trigger such a high insulin spike that don't have us have to consume a bunch of carbohydrates? What if you are someone that is following a lower carb protocol? What if you are someone that doesn't respond well with carbohydrates? Well, again, that's where EAAs come in, right? So EAAs, not to be mistaken with BCAAs, okay, EAAs make it so that you can utilize more of the protein that you consume. Okay, so after a workout, you consume some protein and you would normally get some protein synthesis with it, but per some of these studies I've referenced, when you take in essential amino acids, it can 4X the availability of the protein. Basically what it's doing is it's making it so that you are signaling the mTOR response to allow yourself to start building muscle much faster. Normally, think about it. You finish a workout, you start consuming something, maybe you have a protein shake, you have some chicken or something like that. It has to break it down, it has to break down those proteins into amino acids, and then eventually, yes, it starts to get to work to rebuild muscle. But with something like leucine and essential amino acids, you can take that alongside your protein and it's going to spike that mTOR really quick and it's going to stop the catabolism. So when we're working out, we're catabolizing, we're breaking down muscle. And right when we stop that catabolism is when muscle building starts. Okay, it's pretty black and white. We're either catabolizing or we're in anabolic mode. 
So in essence, if you just had EAAs without any protein, you're basically putting workers in a factory without any materials. So here we have people sipping on EAAs all the time to try to keep them into an anabolic state, but it's not doing you any good because you don't have any protein to actually utilize. So all you're doing is spiking your insulin, stopping fat loss, but not building muscle. Uh, that sounds like a recipe to becoming skinny fat to me, right? So what you want to be doing is you want to be having this protein alongside your EAAs, but only at very specific times, like post-workout. So you finish your workout, you do your thing. Maybe you have your post-workout meal right after your workout. Maybe you wait 30 minutes. Maybe you wait 60. Maybe you're like me and wait 90 minutes. But after 90 minutes, when you do have your protein shake, you want to have it along with some EAAs. Okay, the science is there. It's just not marketed that well because right now EAAs and BCAAs and all this stuff are being marketed as something to sip on all day long and the evidence just isn't there to support that. But if they told you that you were only to have it one time per day along with your post-workout meal, you wouldn't go through your bottle very fast, right? And then you wouldn't buy as much. So of course that research doesn't get talked about as much. You don't need much. You eat it with your meal, you eat it with your post, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.